Thanks for everyone here. Now I'd like to talk about the security of NVIDIA Tegra platform. Hope you can enjoy it. Um, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Nie Sun. You can call me Sun. And uh, I'm a security researcher at the King Security Lab of Tencent. It's also known as King Lab or King Team. I bet some people here already know us because of the pontoon, right? And uh, I'm one of the researchers at King Lab who are focusing on the security of smart cars. So we do some car hacking stuff. For example, I hope you already know our showcase, the Tesla remote hacking in September 2016. And in, in June 2017, we remotely hacked into the Tesla car without any physical access. We can control the car in both parking and driving mode. So uh, you can find more information from these links. And this is the agenda. Firstly, I'll talk about uh, why we need to dig into the Tegra platform. Then I'll explain the details in the NVMap driver. We'd like to review some known vulnerabilities related to the Tegra platform and finally share some bugs found by ourselves in the NVMap module. So what is the NVIDIA Tegra platform? Tegra is NVIDIA's embedded Linux development platform. It is used in many types of devices, such as smartphones, game consoles, and of course, the automotive systems. I must say that Tegra is widely used in the embedded systems. Here I give three famous products. The, my favorite uh, game console, the Nintendo Switch, and also the, my favorite uh, uh, e-book reader, the Kindle, and of course, Tesla uses Tegra as its infotainment systems. Also, BMW is used using Tegra platform in their cars. So we can see that Tesla and Nvidia, they are good friends. They are automotive partners based on the Tegra processors, the Tesla car has the advanced uh, infotainment system and the IC system. So why we need to dig into the Tegra platform? We dig into it because of our Tesla hacking research. During our Tesla hacking research, we need a way to gain root on the Tesla infotainment system that's an important part in our whole attack chain. So firstly, we already have a code execution bug in the browser contest, but the browser process is running in the low privileged user ID, and it's also in the sandbox, the App Armor sandbox. So we need a local privilege escalation vulnerability, and uh, I think so here I will give a demo video to show how we get the browser shell first without the physical access. Then I will explain why we need to do a local privilege escalation. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, then firstly, we create our fake AP. And you can see we, we do not need to uh, physically access the car, but the car will automatically connect to the fake AP. So uh, need some seconds. And 
and then you, you will see the, uh, the browser, it, it will reload itself, you know, reload the web page itself. Then we use the WebKit vulnerability to e exploit it. Uh, from the, the video's frame, you can see that we got a shell. It's in the browser user ID. It's actually, it's also in the App Armor sandbox. Okay. Go back to my slides. So here uh, um, it's in the step three and step four, we need a local privilege escalation. Uh, in the year 2016, we utilized a well-known kind of vulnerability. So it's easy, it's a, it's a well-known bug in the mainstream kernel, but not the kernel specific part, not in the NVIDIA drivers. Uh, but however, in the year 2017, things become much more difficult for us because Tesla patched all the known vulnerabilities. We need to find a, a zero day to, to hack into the system. So actually, before we dig into the Tegra platform, we use about one month to try to find a new vulnerability, but uh, we failed, so we need to focus on the Tegra. Um, as you can see, according to the AppAmor rules, the, uh, the dev slash NV map and the dev slash NV host control is the only two drivers can be accessed in the AppAmor sandbox. So at that time, we decided to dig into the source code and try to find a bug. Here I, I will introduce, I will give a brief introduction about the NVMAP driver first. But before we talk about NVMAP, we need to talk about NV host control. It's a driver that uh, is the Tegra graphics host driver. And new people already find some interesting bugs in this module, so I'll talk about it later, but for me, I didn't find something new or something special in this module, so I, so I quickly go over it and move to the NVMAP module. So, uh, and uh, in my mind, NVMAP is much more complex than NV host control. What is the NVMAP? NVMAP is the memory manager for Tegra GPU in the mobile phone or in the embedded systems, user process needs a way to communicate with the kernel and with the GPU, especially for the large chunk of memory sharing and the memory read write. So that's why Tegra create its own memory management module in the Linux kernel. But it's very similar to Android and mechanism, you know. Uh, you can find uh, some other similar implementations on the Android devices, such as uh, CMAM. CMAM is the memory manager in the TSO map chipset. So something like that. And uh, NVMAP, actually it's a typical Linux driver. A user process can access it by opening the driver and get the handle to, to operate it. Then it can be sent some IO codes. You can see the IO codes there. Uh, there are many IO control command codes. For example, the NVMAP IOC create, alloc, free memap, and the last one, the P multiple. I'll talk about them later. Uh, as a programmer, not as a hacker, as a programmer, how can we use the NVMAP user interface? Uh, I think uh, you should uh, learn all the structures in the code base. Uh, for example, uh, you can find uh, those uh, structures in the NVMAP IO control head file. For example, the NVMAP open, this function will create a pointer to the NVMAP client structure and the NVMAP IO control create will create a NVMAP handle structure. So it's the same, sim, similar logic. You can find some other structures in the code base. And uh, um, 
after we create and unlock the kernel memory buffer, there is a way to man map the memory buffer into the user space. It works together with some syscalls like the man map. For example, if you invoke the man map syscall to, to hold a user space address, and then you can send the IO control commands via the NV map user interface. It will man map the NV map memory buffers to the user space. So uh, also NV map is used to manage the memory. So there are different kind of memory pool that NV map can handle. Uh, for example, it has different policies for different size of memory requirement. If the size is small, it's less than one page, it will prefer to allocate, allocate from the system heap, right? If the size is very large, uh, it will use the large heap type. So I think it's very good for us. I will talk about it later. Um, here, like, uh, we'll talk about how to allocate physically contiguous memory pages. Uh, I think uh, like uh, in the code base, the NV map heap carve out mask. This, this type of heap pool is a, v is a very good candidate. Uh, we can find some comments in the code base. It says that uh, um, carve outs are platform defined regions of physically contiguous memory which are not managed by the OS. So it's perfect for us. So we can we can have the physically contiguous memory. And if we want to allocate the uncached pages in the code, we found uh, this function. Uh, and uh, you, you can see here that uh, since NVMAP has its own cache management function, so uh, absolutely I think uh, we can have the uncached pages. So it seems it's very good for us. Mm, the, the last uh, IO code, the NV map IOC pin or on pin multiple handles. Uh, this, uh, this is a very important feature in the uh, NV map kernel module. It pins a list of NV map handles and uh, maps the corresponding memory pages into the IO VMM space. So in my viewpoint, uh, this interface is used to communicate uh, between the user space process and the GPU. Um, but here you need to remember, you cannot unpin the unallocated uh, NVMAP handle. If you do this, you will trigger the bug on, the bug on function. So you cannot unpin it before it is allocated. Here uh, we will review some known issues because you know as a bug hunter, uh, we are familiar with the bug hunting routine. We firstly, we analyze all the known issues and find out the code patterns. Then we apply those patterns to the new code base and try to find the new vulnerabilities. That's why uh, we, uh, we will explain those vulnerabilities. These uh, vulnerabilities are very typical and uh, very interesting. I will talk them one by one. Like the, um, the first one, uh, the first one, you know, a Chinese, uh, another Chinese security researcher named uh, Peter P, who published this bug at, uh, okay, uh, who published this bug uh, at uh, HITB CIRP. So um, from my viewpoint, uh, uh, this bug is uh, very straightforward. You know, uh, from the picture we can see the num offsets and the block size, they are totally user controlled. Uh, but before, before the key malloc is caught, there is a lack of checks. So this is a typical uh, heap overflow bug. Mm. Uh, uh, interestingly is that this bug can be directly exploited on the Tesla infotainment system. Uh, but, you know, it is absolutely fixed on the Tegra 3 platform. Uh, I think it's uh, very bad news because someone found this vulnerability and uh, he reported it to Tesla. I think uh, 
uh, maybe they fixed all these kind of bugs. Uh, I cannot find the simil similar pattern in the NV host control, so I need to move on to the NV map module. Again, I, I must say that NV map is much more difficult than NV host control. Um, the second one is also interesting. This bug uh, actually it is related to, to NV map, uh, and uh, you if you want to exploit it, you need some tricks. Firstly, it's a risk condition based uh, use after free bug. Uh, from the picture, we can see you need to successfully uh, to duplicate the FD handle at point A. You need duplicate it. And then at point B, you should uh, give the copy to user function its destination to a read-only memory. Then it will trigger failure, and the the FD handle's ref count will be one. Now you have a have a have an FD handle in the user space, which can be freed at any time you want, so you can exploit it in the future. Uh, if you want to know the whole details you, details, you can find the tricks in the links below. Um, because it's in the NV map uh, module, so we, we need to review it. But, uh, but you know, uh, this bug is exploited in the Nexus 9, which is not the same code base with uh, with Tesla. Tesla is uh, similar to the Nexus 7 phone, I think. So we found the, the function code uh, here, and uh, you can see from the picture, you can see the handle field. It's not a system file descriptor. It's a, actually, it's a, a structure pointer. So they are totally not the same logic in the Tesla infotainment system. We cannot like here, uh, I, I must say, the idea cannot be borrowed to Tesla hacking. We cannot find the same issue in the Tegra 3 code base. And then, uh, uh, at that time, I came across to the famous vulnerability named Rohammer or Drummer. Uh, the author of Drummer published the first root exploit which can be used on the ARM Linux, it's a new attack that exploits the Rohammer hardware vulnerability on Android devices like the Nexus 5. The big difference between Rohammer and the Drummer, or, or we can see the big difference between exploiting the Intel device and the ARM device is how to allocate the uncached physically contiguous memory and tests the bit flip. So Drummer uses a very cool idea. It uses an interface in the mobile phone. You know, in, in the Android phone, it uses iron as its memory management. So I'm curious, is Drummer exploitable on the Tesla infotainment system on the Tegra platform? Uh, you know, we have a key benefit. Remember, we, we have talked to it uh, earlier, NV map can also be used to allocate the uncached physically contiguous memory. So, so it's a key benefit. Uh, then I decided to have a try. So it's easy. We, uh, I just wrote a, a kernel function and built it into the Nexus 7 kernel and I tested the bit flip. But uh, I tried a lot, actually I tried a lot of times and the, but the bad news is that the bit cannot be flipped. So, so this bug is not, not work in the Tegra platform. Um, after we reviewed all the known vulnerabilities, uh, so we realized that we cannot easily exploit the Tesla kernel with a known vulnerability. So at that time, we need to find our own zero uh, zero days, find our own vulnerabilities. Um, to be honest, after we dig into the source code, we, uh, I must say that the code quality of NVMap module is not very good. So we found some interesting bugs. Here I will introduce some 
infer leak bugs of different types, like the first three bugs. Then uh, in the end, uh, I will talk about a, a bug, the CVE 2017-6261. This bug is a, it's very good. We use it to root the Tesla infotainment system. Actually, it's not, uh, it's more than enough. It's perfect uh, in our Tesla hacking research. Uh, but first, uh, we'll talk about the, those uh, infer leak bugs. The first one is the NVMap handle pointer infer leak. Um, <coughs> here, I'll talk about it. Firstly, uh, you, from the picture, you can see the user can invoke the L control with the command code NVMap IOC create. The NVMap driver will return a handle to the user space. It is a handle for the memory you will operate in the future, like you can alloc or free it. From the macro defined function, we can see that it's not the same as the bug found by Project Zero, right? It's a, actually, it's a pointer from the ref structure. Here, we will we, we have a clear uh, image that we can see. The, the handle, the H, is Kizi alloc from the Kizi alloc is a structure. And uh, then it uh, is assigned to the ref's handle field. And, uh, and uh, uh, finally, it will return to the user space, right? So uh, it, it's a pattern in the kernel mode. You alloc a structure, and then you return the structure pointer to the user space. Uh, it like, absolutely is a security issue, right? From this picture, we can, we can see that the handle actually is a pointer to the kernel heap. Um, the, the user can create any NVMap handle at any time. It means that maybe in the future, we can use this trick to predict the heap layout or we can do the heap spray, right? So, so from this picture, you can, you can see the handle. You can create it. And the second one is another type of infer leak box. This bug is also very interesting. But uh, it works in the earlier version of Tesla kernel. In the version maybe 2.6, there is no message restriction a low privileged user process can also read the message output. And the second is that bug on function just write the ops message to the syslog and let the user process to die. So that we can imagine a scenario and uh, which is really happens. Firstly, we will trigger a mini bug in the dev slash env map. We already found the one is that, uh, you know, if we unpin the, uh, the handle, which is not allocated before, it will trigger the bug on function. And the bug on will pre print out the registers and the stack trace to the syslog. Uh, from the user space, we can read the message outside inside the AppArmor contest. It means even we are in the AppArmor sandbox, we can read some sensitive information. Uh, from this picture, uh, we can see that uh, this is a bug triggered in the NVMap IO control. And uh, in the user space, uh, we can read lots of uh, kernel address information, right? So it's very useful when you debug your, your kernel exploit. I like it very much. And uh, the, the, this is another infer leak bug. It, it's a common mistake in the memory management implementation. Uh, it's like when user land program requires memory allocation via NVMap interface, NVMap doesn't clean its dirty pages so that we can request a large chunk of memory and search for the sensitive information in the allocated memory. Um, let's look at how to get the leaked memory information. Firstly, as always, we need to open the NVMap driver first and then request 
a handle to operate the memory, and uh, it can be invoked by the IO control syscall with the NVMAP create IO code. Secondly, uh, we can send the IO code, the NVMAP IOC alloc, and ask the NVMAP to, to alloc the memory pages. Uh, finally, this is uh, uh, an important step. You should call the memmap syscall first to get a virtual address in the user space, and then send the IO code memmap IO code with the address info. Uh, from the picture, you can see we use the return value to send the IO control syscall. So now you can read the memory out from the user space address, the ADDR variable. So what we can see from the memory. Here we have a demonstration image. You can, if we search for some kernel pointers, like it starts with the C1, and we can find some, something very interesting, right? So many kernel pointers in the memory. And, uh, <coughs> okay, so this is the, the third Infernic box. Here I will give a brief summary. Like the first bug can uh, just just can leak a pointer to a kernel structure, but the second bug can leak a panic contest, which includes all the register information and the the stack trace. But this bug, the, the last one, we can leak even more than 200 megabytes memory. It's not just the kernel memory, because of the memory management. I think uh, we can also leak some inter-processing information, right? Uh, I think uh, if, if at a good time, maybe we can uh, get uh, some token in the Tesla to uh, directly route into the system, but uh, I, I do not uh, have this, this kind of luck. Uh, this, uh, this is another vulnerability. This vulnerability is what we reported to Tesla. It can be used to gain root on the Tesla infotainment system. Uh, actually, it's an arbitrary address decrement in the, in the dev slash NVMAP drive module. So let's look at the root cause of this bug. And firstly, it's normal that a user process to a user process to open the NVMAP driver and then invoke the IO control sys call with the NVMAP IOC pin multiple IO code. You can also find the, the, find the structure here. Right? We used, uh, this structure is what we used to send the IO code from the user space. There is, a, there is an array of handles. Uh, because the, the interface is used to pin an array of NVMAP handles, so in, here in the for loop, it will validate all the handles first in, in the array, right? If the NVMAP vi validate get, this function get filled, the loop will be created. But, but the loop condition is, is, something, is very strange, right? The loop condition is wrong. When the, when the variable write, when the write is not false, it will quit the loop. But before that, the index, the, I, the variable i, the increment step is already executed. It's, it means that the value of i is already equal to one at this time. Even the first handle in the array is wrong. So let's see what, what, what is the next. So we can see that the, the value of i is assigned to to the variable nr, so that uh, we can enter another for loop. Uh, when we enter the for loop here, the first handle, the h, when i is equal to, to zero, the handle in the array is passed into the nvmap handle put function. Um, let's look at the nvmap handle put function. NVMAP handle put, this function is used to decrease the reference count. When the ref count is zero, the handle will be freed. But 
you know, uh, the address of the handle is totally user controlled. We can go back, like here, we can find that the NV map pin handle, this structure is totally user controlled. We can assign arbitrary value to the handles. Mm. So here, uh, here we can decrease by one in the arbitrary address, which I think this is awesome. You, know, you can see the automatic dec return. At this time, the, the ref field will be decreased by one. I think this is the root cause of this vulnerability. Actually, it's a arbitrary address decrement vulnerability. And so uh, here is a, a code snippet. There is code to trigger this kind of vulnerability from the user space. You can see it's very, very easy. You can uh, assign the address you want to decreased in the handles. Mm, then we'll talk about how to, how to exploit this bug in the, in the sandbox, in the Qt car browser contest. Here we need to handle two kind of different kernel versions, uh, but the, the 2.6 is easy for us. But the Tesla has upgraded its kernel from 2.6 to the 4.4. .4. So uh, in the new kernel, we need to deal with some, some new mitigations. Uh, here you can see those new mitigations. The first one is the PAN emulation uh, mitigation, which means you cannot redirect the the IP address to the, the PC ad address to the user space, you needed to finish your exploit shellcode in the kernel mode. Uh, and uh, the second one is the demessage restriction. Uh, we mentioned earlier, the demessage restriction is by default on in the new kernel. So we cannot read the demessage message out. So it seems we need to blindly exploit this bug. And uh, the last one is the temp folder. Temp folder. The temp folder is not executable, which means you cannot build your exploit in a, in a standalone binary and uh, drop it into the temp folder, which is you know, typical in our exploit writing. But uh, now we cannot build it into a standalone binary. We needed to use some something like full RLP tricks to 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 do this kind of, uh, of stuff. So in c conclusion, if you want to exploit this bug, you need to write your exploit in a, uh, like a pure RLP gadgets in the kernel mode. Uh, then uh, here I will talk about how to, how to bypass those kind of mitigations for the PAN mitigation. Uh, actually, it's uh, very funny at that time, I think, because uh, the kernel is by default enabled this kind of mitigation, but we found that the text segment, the kernel code segment in the, uh, I mean, the, the code segment in the kernel is still writable. Uh, what does it mean? It means that we can also use some typical Linux kernel exploit trick, like we can patch the kernel first and uh, uh, like uh, modify the logic of this IES UI, set IES UID function to easily set IES UID. This function uh, with the argument, with the parameter, uh, argument zero to get root. So it seems uh, this mitigation is useless in the new kernel. And uh, here we'll talk about how to disable the demessage restriction. In the new kernel, there is a global variable named uh, demessage restrict. From, the, uh, from this picture, we can see th this uh, variable. Uh, the, the value one means enable and zero means disable. So we need to change the value from one to zero. And it fits our bug very well because you know this bug. We have the bug. It's a it's a arbitrary address decrement by one, right? We can easily achieve this goal. 
And uh, at that time, there is no ASLR in the new kernel. So we can use this trick first to bypass the demessage restriction. And then we can use the demessage output to debug our exploit. It saves a lot of time, actually. And uh, for how to disable the app armor restriction, this one is uh, a little difficult for us because you know, it's different uh, from it's different uh, uh, from the the last slide the app, the uh, the message restriction because in the app armor contest so you need uh, we need to change the value from the app armor enforce to the app armor complain which means we need to change the value from zero to one which uh, this is a uh, an increment operation uh, other than the decrement uh, uh, operation because we need to you know, add one to the zero becomes one. So we need to transfer our, our bug to another way like we, we need a way to change the logic to a arbitrary read and write. So here uh, finally we found, uh, I think it's a perfect way to make the bug into a code execution first so we find the uh, a syscall named sysaccept4 in the syscall table. It's a, an entry in the syscall table, and it's rarely used in the Linux kernel. So it's very safe to to modify it, and by trigger our bug multiple times, we decreased by one by multiple times. The entry address of this syscall will be. You can from the picture you can see it can point to the BLX R three. So it's a it's a jump. Uh, it's a jump to a register. And for syscall syscall, you can control so many registers like the R three register, right? So if we assign a useful address to the R three register, like the RP gadgets here. You can find that this is a read and a write gadgets. We can make the uh, code execution again to a kernel read and write bug. So, so till here, exploit this bug becomes very clear. We can make the decrement to a to a code execution, then to a arbitrary kernel memory read and write. So here we can see um, we can trigger our bug multiple times to, to modify it. We can trigger it uh, multiple times, then the sys accept for will, will to point to a, uh, to a jump, uh, jump to the R3 register, right? And uh, then, we, because of now we have the ability to arbitrarily read and write the kernel memory, so we use the 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 red the red gadget to patch the sys i set res uid function it, it, it's a typical trick in the linux kernel export so by calling the set res uid with zero in the user space we can get our root shell and uh, from this picture you can you can you can find that uh, we already Mm, uh, exploit this uh, this infotainment, and we got a got a shell with the UID is equal to root equal to zero, right? So this is our goal. And uh, um, so so uh, here in the end, I should uh, give a special thanks to this paper. Actually, um, when I dig into the Tegra platform. Uh, we read uh, this paper, the Android Iron Hazard, which is published uh, on the CCIS conference in the year uh, 2016. As I said, uh, uh, you know, NVMAP is very similar to the Android Iron mechanism, so that uh, this bug pattern in the Iron in the Iron can also be used in the NVMAP module. So I borrowed some ideas from this paper, and I like it very much. You can have a look. OK, in the end, uh, um, so uh, during the research, my teammate uh, Liu Ling, he finished the final exploit. Uh, because the bug is not complex, but uh, we have only have a very short term to finish our work. 
uh, and uh, we need to use the full RLP tricks to finish the exploit uh, in the QD car browser. It's a totally uh, blindly exploit. So my, my teammate Liu Ling is very good at the exploit writing. So he finished the work. And also my colleague named Jia Hong, who is very good at the Android kernel exploit. Actually, I think so many famous famous Linux kernel exploit is written by, by him. So at that time, uh, we only have experience in how to disable the SE Linux, but we are not uh, familiar with the AppArmor tricks. So he told me how to bypass the AppArmor restriction in the kernel mode. And also some other car hacking researchers in our team. Okay, that's all. Thank you.